The Liturgy of the Word for the Second Study of Lent explores responses to God's will and commands that challenge conventional beliefs and thought patterns. The theme is Attentive Listening. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his garments became glistening, intensely white, as no fuller on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking to Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is well that we are here. Let us make three booths, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, for they were exceedingly afraid. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, This is my beloved son, listen to him. And suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen until the Son of Man should have risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what the rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel reading contains Mark's narrative for the transfiguration which took place on a mountain top. In biblical stories, mountains are significant for encountering God. They are places of revelation. Accordingly, the transfiguration story intends to reveal Jesus' identity paired with the command to the disciples, listen to him. The word transfiguration implies the change of form which Jesus did briefly to demonstrate his true identity to the three disciples present, Peter, James, and John. The story's core message lies in the threefold affirmation of Jesus' identity, his mission, and his role as the voice of God. First, God's voice resounds on this mountain declaring to the disciples that Jesus is his beloved son. This is the public disclosure and declaration of Jesus' absolute union with God and his identity to which they will testify before others in their subsequent mission to the world. Second, Jesus' mission as the suffering Messiah is affirmed on this mountain. Coming down from the mountain, Jesus instructed the disciples not to disclose what they had seen and learned about him until after the resurrection. This means that he fully understood that his mission as the Messiah and the Son of God involved his self-sacrificial death, which the resurrection would follow. Finally, God declares to the disciples that they ought to listen to him that is, to Jesus, God's Son. This command must be interpreted against the presence of Moses, the lawgiver, and Elijah, the prophet. They represent two modes of God's communication in the Old Testament. The people of Israel listened to them. Now the disciples and their followers will listen to Jesus, the new and direct mode of God's communication, superior to the law and the prophets. Today's readings highlight the need for an attentive listening to grasp God's message and understand his will. Jesus listened to God's will and heard the cry of humanity. Responding and accepting the mission of salvation, which involved the sacrifice of his life, he manifested the depth of God's love. Let us pray. 
O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory, through Christ our Lord. Oh,